Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now, Showcase is out. So it's an Alliance War-based solo quest with two parts and a very limited reward. So you get seven loyalty shatters, which effectively can equal 7,007 star shards or about half of the loyalty crystal and the Deathless King Groot piece. And, well, I did it. I streamed it. I didn't do perfect. I did use some revives, most of whom was on the Photon boss, actually, because I picked Kingpin instead of Mantis my first time around. I soloed him with Mantis on my second time around, but uh, it went uh, a bit more poorly the first part. But, you know, that's fine. Ultimately, I do want to talk about this event and i genuinely want to hear from you what do you guys think about this event what has been your experience so far if you are waiting for a guide before you jump in this piece of content then rest assured i will be making one very shortly uh latest tomorrow it will be out hopefully tonight we'll see how sleepy i get and uh you know raids and uh, alliance war on and everything else but uh first things first my own personal experience far as the fights go, most of them I actually kind of like. Uh, some of them I recognize as well, that I do like that Kindred on Hazard Ship, that Long Shot on the Masochism Over Time, uh, that Mysterio, that Werewolf by Night. I also unfortunately recognize that Sasquatch and Red Skull and the Fam Fights. Uh, I must say that the right side's probably the harder one, so if you're just going for a quick completion, well, you really still want to explore it. Ultimately, did I have a ton of fun in this piece of content? Nah, it wasn't awful completely, but I do have quite a few issues with it as well. And this is not me being like negative, as again, or, or kind of like condescending or whatever. Uh, I have my issues with the piece of content from conceptual point of view, because uh, we can refer to Kabam's forum post introducing new content showcase and drawing inspiration there you go design philosophy when we, sh when we showcase competitive meta we, we want to br bring together some of the greatest challenges most satisfying interactions again most satisfying interactions where they definitely picked some very unsatisfying fights with those ebb and flow knockdowns right back at it nodes for instance we even occasionally explore what if scenarios, like if Red Skull had his updated defensive kit and that Red Skull is objectively the worst fight. You can solo it with Galen and Kate and uh, Corvus, I think, and a handful of other champions, but still quite nasty. Uh, still, where might Alliance War defense play as pleasant? First line showcase features fights from Sugar Pill and Decay. Yes, dust off your Sandman, didn't really do much. Knock off Spiderwebs with Silk. Silk also didn't do too much, so that was kind of misleading. Trying out the outdated, updated Luke Cage crit, kit. Da, 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 da. <sighs> for those for those who took similar paths every war of sugar pill seasons we hope you enjoyed the chance to revisit and share that experience with the rest of the community we also hope that those who typically shy away from alliance war enjoy the experience and some of its challenges now this is where the problems begin this type of content will not entice people to go and play alliance war if they don't already do it uh, because some of these fights, you just have to know some tricks. Some of it is definitely experience that allowed, you know, to do them as well as they were done. But ultimately, I just don't know what, who this content is for. Because based on the reactions from people in my chat, for instance, this did anything but entice more people to play Alliance War. And the issue here, again, is it's not the content itself. I don't think the content was awful. I don't, I really don't. I do have, again, some kind of, like, annoyance with Photon Boss, especially because she's kind of bugged right now, which is going to be a separate topic. Uh, but other than that, you know, I think the content was about fine. The problem is, there is no target audience for that content, as far as I can say. Uh, for, for the higher-end players who can blitz through this one, content is borderline meaningless. Like, if you like an experienced Lions War player, the rewards there are crappy, like half a seven-star crystal and the Deathless King Root piece. It's really not much. And 
as well, if you know how to do these fights, if you do have all the appropriate counters ranked up, you kind of kind of run through it, maybe use a couple of items, and it's going to be like whatever type of rank. And then, for people who do not play Alliance War, this is going to be wrong. They might not have all the champions required, they might not know all the kind of like tricks and interactions with decay in some of these nodes. Uh, and, and there will be a lot of people who struggle. And that is not what's going to make them love Alliance War at all. In fact, this will have an opposite effect. Probably can... So this is how Tier 1 Alliance War is. And they're probably going to want to stay away from it even more than that, you know, before this content came out. So I don't think it accomplishes anything. I really don't. And on top of it all, it's not even a good representation of Alliance War. It really isn't, because this is a quest. It's not the type of content where you will switch your masteries for, where you will boost up. Three minute boosts are unavailable. It's not the type of content where you can, you know, Share the parts, share the fights, and get somebody to place on free fights for you, and so on and so forth. It's just not a good representation of how it is to fight in Alliance War. It's about probably as well as Kabam can make it, but it's completely different. As somebody who has done these fights in Alliance War, and as somebody who went through this right now, again, I just don't think it accomplished anything because it doesn't really even feel like the Alliance War fight for the most part. At least it didn't to me. Because again, I didn't boost up, there's no 3 minute boost, I'm definitely not going to use any class boosts in this one. And not to mention that all of the defenders are 7 star rank 3s, even from the champions that do not exist as 7 stars. Therefore, the difficulty of it is, you know, higher as well, because the health pools are bigger and whatnot. Like, you know, we don't have a Baron Zemo 7 star, we don't have a future Ant-Man 7 star. And, and that is what we're fighting here. Yes. And, and those are, you know, more jacked versions. That you're going up against, which is significantly less forgiving as well. And yeah, I'm just kind of confused by it. I guess I'm gonna say. Um, again, I'm not gonna say I had a completely awful time where it was like unrealistic. No, there were some things that frustrated me, some interactions that I didn't enjoy. But as I was doing this, I was genuinely thinking the entire time, "Who is this for?" And I still can't find an answer. Perhaps you guys can help me. Because again, top end players, top wall end players will be extremely unimpressed with the rewards and will not think much of this to begin with. It's going to be a relatively meaningless little thing for them. Aragon players who might not play Tier 1 Alliance War are not going to get into the Alliance War because of this content. Yeah. And then that is the worst thing that I think Kabam did with this. They, they put that King Root piece in it. So they kind of made it mandatory for a lot of people. Isn't that an optional type of thing where if you want to see how Alliance Warriors come and enjoy it, this is made a forced affair for a lot of people. And when you do that, again, for a lot of people, they're just going to end up resenting this game mode even more and not have a great time. And the last thing is Photon. They absolutely, they, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure that Kabam is aware of the current AI issues and the fact that it's almost impossible to switch Photon and Nightcrawler and, and the other Dashback champions. They just do not hold block, the timer doesn't start, it's virtually impossible. I am 100% sure that Kabam knows that. Why would they put up a boss that doesn't function? How it normally should, thus making it significantly harder of the fight. Yeah, you can still solo it with uh, crossbones, and you can still solo it with uh, mantis for sure. I'm sure Elsa does fine. I did it with kingpin, even though it wasn't too great of a time. Again, just because I largely struggled uh, to turn on her charges manually, but yeah, it's definitely doable. But still, it, it just is in a bad taste. Put up a bug champion as a relatively tough boss. Um, I don't know. So ultimately, what do you guys think? Was this content a W or an L? I I, I don't you know. I'm I'm just confused. 
I guess it depends whether one will explain. Because what they said here, like, we also hope that those who typically shy away from Alliance War enjoy the chance to experience some of its challenges. I think this, based on that statement, this is definitely not a positive thing. Because people who do Alliance War will get through this, that, you know, better. And again, it's not going to mean much to tier 1 Alliance War players because of the rewards. And people who don't typically play Alliance War will likely be not enticed. They're going to be basically forced if they want to get the Deathless King Groot piece, and they're not going to like it. At least that's what I think. I am, again, very curious to know what do you guys think about this piece of content. Uh, do you think it was successful? Enjoyable? Fun? Or do you think it was not cool? As I said before, I will be working on a guide, so you can stay tuned for that. And I will catch you guys soon. Bye-bye. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the next